Hi you guys, welcome to my little paintbrush. My name is Miss Cami, and it is spooky season here at the studio. We love Halloween and today we get to paint the Pumpkin King. I love this painting, it's been revamped over the years. I hope you enjoy it. If you have our paint kit, you will have a prepped canvas, you'll have all the paints that I'm using and the same size paintbrushes that I'll be using today as well. So hopefully you have that. Um, but if not, I'm gonna show you the sizes of my brushes. Um, I have a number 12 flat here. This is a good standard to have. We'll do most of our painting with this brush. And then I have a detail brush. I also have a smaller flat on hand just in case. I really don't think I'm gonna use it, but I will have it handy in case I need it. I also have a jar or two of water handy and a paper towel. So these are just supplies you wanna have before you get started. Let's look at our paint palette. It's pretty simple, but Jack kind of speaks for himself, right? So we've got our blue, yellow, black, and white. You can see how I've separated my white into two piles. It's a really good idea to do that, two or even three piles of white paint. That way you don't contaminate it as you're going and you always have clean white. It's really important to have clean white as you go. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna grab my flat brush and I'm gonna get it wet in some water. We do that for a couple of reasons. We wanna loosen our bristles, but also our acrylic paint needs water right out of the bottle. It's not ready. Most people think that it is, but it's not. It's gonna need water immediately. So keep that brush nice and loose with water and continue to mix that water into your paint to keep it loose. All right, we're gonna start with our midnight blue background. I've got this nice dark blue right here. I'm gonna add a touch of white to it. That's for coverage more than anything else. White is super pigmented, and so it helps us not have to do layers and layers and layers on our painting because it's got all that pigment. So lighten it up, not too much. You still want that nice dark blue background. And then we're gonna paint in a circular motion around that nice yellow moon. Now, when I get up close to the moon, I'm gonna leave just a little bit of white um, space right there. See how I just have that little bit of white? So I'm not gonna get right up close yet. It's always a little bit tricky to do um, a dark blue sky right up next to a bright yellow because as you know, uh, blue and yellow make green. So we really struggle to make sure we don't make a green sky. This is not tornado season over here, right? Okay, so not much of a blue background, but we're gonna get down here close to Jack's back collar here. You can see I'm just using this flat brush to get in all the spaces, but I'm not stressing myself out because this is all black. So if I get some of my dark blue in there, it's gonna be totally fine because black will cover it right up. That's the one nice thing with having that black coming in next and kind of just clean it right up. Now I'm not painting on a canvas. I'm painting on a mixed media paper. If I were painting on a canvas, hopefully like you are, I would encourage you to wrap your edges. So that just means go around the sides of your canvas. I always tell the little artist to think of your canvas as a present and your pictures are wrapped the wrapping paper so you would want to go all the way around your edges makes for a nice completed work of art all right so I'm just getting this dark blue in you might be finding that in your mind you're thinking I'm gonna need another layer of dark blue that really all depends on how much white you added how thick your layers are and all that good stuff but don't panic yet because we're gonna add that white still, and so that'll really help um, with coverage too. All right, just a little section left. Again, trying to leave a little bit of white next to the moon. It'll help with our next step, make it a little easier. And 
it's quite difficult to butt up right next to that moon, especially because it's a circle. Circles are just tricky. Okay, so we've got that initial layer in there. I'm going to get my brush wet again. Because, again, you really want to continue to have that loose paint. I like to um, use the example of melted ice cream when I refer to the consistency your paint needs to be because it still has a little bit of a bounce to it. It's not water, but it's nice and loose. Now I'm going to have all that dark blue on my brush and then put chunks of white on the corner like this. And now I'm gonna get right up next to my moon with that chunk of white. And since my uh, first step didn't get as close to the moon, I left that little section. It's gonna help have a nice bright white. And I'm going to go all the way around the moon with this. And I might even come, see how I'm brushing kind of up, swirling that white, so you have a nice swirl around your moon. And you can reload as much as necessary to get that paint nice and thick on your brush so that you get a nice brush stroke. Now, if your paint isn't offloading from your brush to your surface, whether it's paper, whether it's a canvas, whether it's wood, doesn't matter. If you're having a hard time offloading that paint, you need to add water or you need to add more paint to your brush. It's a mistake a lot of new artists make. We're kind of afraid of the paint at first, and so we don't put enough on our brush. So don't be afraid of it really loaded on there of course you don't want chunky you know streaks left behind but don't be afraid to load it you can always take some away if necessary and you can add as much white around this moon as you want i'm just going to continue going around here nice and slow as i get next to the moon and then swirl and brush it out I, we started painting Jack years ago, and he's just always been one of those paintings this time of year that everybody wants to do. He's just so fun to paint. I think because as long as you get a particular eyeball and smile, you can really nail the character. So he's it's kind of an easy character to get down. I say that, but you might not be feeling that, but trust me, they'll come together really well for you. So I'm going to do my best coming down and close to the collar. Again, don't forget that our collar is black, so our main focus right now is to stay out of the moon as best we can, because when we come back through with the yellow, that's where we're going to really want to make sure our blue isn't in the moon. If you get streaks of blue in your moon, um, a good tip is to have a damp paper towel or we love to use Clorox wipes or any kind of uh, wipe that has alcohol in it because the alcohol will eat away at the paint. So if you have that handy, you can just wipe it right away. So I'm just coming through and adding that light around Jack's collar. You can see I've got a little bit in his collar, but I'm not, not stressing about that because I know I'm going to come through with that black paint later and it's going to clean it right up. So just adding some light, you know, because this moon is going to cast that light everywhere. I would say this is one of the more time-consuming steps of this painting. Just getting around those bat wings is a little tricky. But thank goodness we can have the forgiveness of that black collar coming in. All right, let's step back and see what we've accomplished here. I want to remind you as you are painting that you don't have to paint at my pace. If you're thinking, man, I'm so far behind, maybe you're still on your first 
dark blue layer. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. This is very common for me to go faster than the artists that I'm teaching. Um, for several reasons, I like to kind of be one step ahead of you so you know what's coming. But feel free to pause, feel free to rewind, feel free to take um, several hours to do this painting. Do it at your own pace so that at the end of your painting, you're happy with it and you didn't feel rushed. So no need to go to, at my pace. That's what's so great about technology, right? So I'm washing my brush super good because I'm gonna use the same brush with my yellow. And I want to make sure I don't make green. So I'm gonna wash it. This is when a clean or two jars or two cups of water is handy because you can wash and rinse and make sure there isn't even any dirty water um, in your brush that might contaminate the color. Okay. Let's flip our plate or palette around and find our yellow. I'm again going to add some white to it. Coverage. Always got that coverage in mind. And paint does dry a shade or two darker on your surface than it appears on your palette. So it always surprises people how dark I always tend to veer on the lighter side, just in case. Now, as I'm painting, I'm going to just press and make sure I don't have any blue on there, because sometimes it hides. If you see blue start to come off of your brush as you're painting, just stop what you're doing and wash it again. So I'm going around Jack's head nice and easy. Remember, Jack's a skeleton, so he's going to be white. We just want to keep that in mind. Don't want to get too much yellow in him if we can help it. That way we don't have to fight it on the next step. But again, we don't have to worry about that bat so much. We can get little bits of yellow in him and it's fine. I'm kind of keeping a white edge between... Um, the edge of my moon in the blue sky because I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add some white um, and so it'll just help me get that when I'm ready for that step. And be careful because your blue is probably still wet depending on the temperature you're painting in. Mine's dry. Mine dries really fast because I'm surrounded by lights causing my paint to dry at a really rapid pace. So I'm all ready dried but you're probably got some wet blue paint so just be careful as you go around that if you get any blue on your brush just stop and wash it it's not worth trying to brush it out okay so we've got that filled in and then we're just going to do the same thing we did in our sky we're going to add chunks of white to the edge of our brush and go around the inner edge of our moon. And this is going to be the most forgiving edge as we connect to the blue because how white it is. Okay, so it really helps when you have that super light next to dark. And it kind of gives that glow too, so it gets darker around Jack's head which I love and you can butt up nice and close and get as clean of an edge as you want again this is tricky so be nice to yourself going around any edge is hard but a circle is even more so I always have to remind myself that because I'm a very clean painter I like clean edges and I tend to be pretty particular on that and I waste a lot of my time trying to get it perfect when we have to remember this is hand painted it's not a print so it will look like it's hand painted at the end of the day which is which is awesome right okay so just coming around here you can tell I'm just doing little sections at a time I'm not trying to do the whole moon at once and again, you can do it nice and thick. You can do it thinner. It's your painting, so you can do it however you want. You can blend it in more. You can have it nice and stark um, edge. 
just nice and easy. Remember to be loosening your paint as you go. That'll also help you with that edge. So continue to add water to your paint as much as is needed. The goal here is a lighter edge and darker shadow as you get close to Jack, which I think we are accomplishing pretty well. I'm going to come all the way into the collar area and do the same thing. Kind of give some light right there. Blend it in. Again, not concerned if I get in the collar. This bat is going to be just fine. All right. Loving it. I love the dark blue and the yellow. It really pops together as soon as you get through that tricky trickiness of not turning anything green you'll have a really cool result as it pops against each other. Perfect, we are cruising. Let's go ahead and wash our brush again. Really good, we're gonna do um, Jack next, so we wanna have a nice clean brush. Before I paint his face white though, I wanna make a charcoal gray. So I'm just gonna move some white over to black and just make a nice dark gray. You can see I'm using dirty contaminated white to do that because I can. It's it's going to be just fine. Um, I just want a nice pile of gray for shadowing Jack. So I just made that real quick. Now I'm going to wash my brush super, super good. Swish it around. Rinse it off in my clean water. Make sure it's clean, guys. Makes a lot of swishing. All right, now I'm gonna get some nice clean white on my brush. I'm mixing in the water because my paint is so, like it's drying so fast with all these lights. I'm gonna do a really rough layer of white on Jack. Nothing crazy, more than anything, I'm just wetting the surface so that I can get a nice um, shadow blended in. So I don't really, I'm not putting a ton of thought into this. I can go right over the eyes and the nose marks. Nothing wrong with that. I just want to wet the surface. Because with acrylic paint, we have to blend wet into wet. So that's why I'm doing this. Sometimes we can just leave our canvas white because it's already white. We don't have to do that. But because I'm blending, I want to just get a nice quick layer of white on there. All right, let's shadow. Same thing we've been doing this whole time. I've got white on my brush. It's nice and loose. And I'm going to put the corner in that gray that I made. Okay. And now I'm going to take that corner and I'm going to go around Jack. Now remember, we're also going to outline Jack's head. So if you're not right up against the yellow, don't stress. If you get too much gray and it's overwhelming you, you can add more white to your brush and it'll just kind of fade it out. But see how I'm working my brush in that circular motion? Getting it nice and blended. all the way around and same with everything else we've been doing this can be a really really thick gray shadow around him or it can be really thin it's just completely up to you as the artist and you can see again i'm not focused on having this perfect edge right now because I'm going to go back and outline and that's going to clean it up. So I'm not going to stress about something I don't have to stress about right now. Because why? Why do we need to add stress, right? It's already a little stressful to, to paint, especially if we're brand new at it. So 
we don't need to add any more stress. So I just continue, continue to go around. Jack's head here. Continue to blend. Continue to add white or gray. Whatever it is that you feel like you need to make it the perfect shade for you. We'll go through and do his knobby little chin here. I love these certain features that just tell you who you're painting, you know, and that chin is one of them for me. You can see I'm not just assuming that one brush stroke will give me the result that I want. I'm going over this over and over and over again, and you have to do that. You can't assume that you're going to get it right on the first try. You're going to have to give yourself time and grace to get it where it needs to be. We're going to do his little neck here. He's got the skinniest, skinniest little neck. Also going to be outlined. So I'm just being nice and easy on myself there. We're going to go ahead and do the white shirt real quick. So I washed my brush so it didn't have the gray in it. So I can wet that surface too. So just add some white to my brush. Fill in the shirt around the back collar. Then a little bit of gray. And we'll go around. This is kind of much easier brush motion than the head. Just kind of make this M, curvy M shape. We are so close to finishing this painting. It's amazing. Once you get that sky and moon in, the sky just comes together. Okay, perfect. We are going to do all the black now. Wash my brush. Obviously, there's little tiny um, black portions here that we might have to switch to our little detail brush, but I'm going to start with my flat. But before I get started, I want to add water to my black paint and just loosen it up. It's been sitting there a while. The lights are on it. I want to loosen that blank black paint so it's not thick so that I can really have a nice smooth offload from my brush to canvas. All right, let's go ahead and start on the eyeballs, his fun eyes. We get to do eyes, eyebrows and all kinds of fun features in a minute, but let's go ahead and just start with these eyeballs. These are iconic jack shapes into these fun points at the end, which again, if you're feeling like I can't get that with this flat brush, you can switch and switch to your detail to get some of these. I like to do as much as I can with my big brush. It eliminates um, clumps. It saves my detail brush from getting a bad hair day and then not giving me very good detail lines. So I always like to do as much as I can with my big brush. Curve it down. And around here. Then smooth it all out. Okay, let's go to the bat. Remember the little eyeballs are not black, so be careful. Be careful there. And again, I'm going to do everything I can with my flat brush, but the second I feel uncomfortable or that I need to switch to my detail, I'll just kind of leave those steps for later and I'll come back and get them a little bit better with my 
with my detail brush. But you can get a lot of this filled in with this big brush. Just using the toe of your brush and then the flat of your brush and kind of bouncing between those two to give you the nice edge that you want. I'll probably avoid most of the bat's head altogether and do that with a smaller brush. You can even do it with a, a bigger round. If you have a bigger round brush at your disposal, you can use that as well. If you have our paint kit, you have a number six round, which is great to use as well. Coming around the white shirt here. Little scrawny shoulders. Jack's iconic, just scrawny body, right? All right, and then we'll come up. Feel free to move your canvas as you do this. I cannot. I'm kind of stuck in place with all the equipment around me, but you can move your canvas. And it's so helpful to do that um, if you can't reach certain spots or like, it's uncomfortable to have your arm in a certain position. Go ahead and just move it. Flip your canvas around on your lap, all the things. Okay, almost done. Remember to wrap your canvas as you go. So all this black that we're putting in now would wrap around the edges as well right anytime you touch the edge of your canvas with a new color you need to wrap it around all right it's looking good i'm going to switch to my detail brush to get that bat face in and get around those uh, little eyes and have those nice spiky ears so i just put um black paint on my detail brush and I like to just kind of outline it first and then fill it in. Again, um, don't forget you can pause as we start to do lines. You're probably going to feel the need to have more time to get those in, especially if um, we're new to line work. It kind of takes some time to get that muscle memory down. So feel free to pause, pause the video, take a break, all that, all those things. Getting around these eyeballs and we're not even going to paint the eyeballs because again, our canvas is white. So we can kind of just avoid that step altogether. The only time you would need to, or might feel the need to, is if you get black in them and you want to clean them up, then you're welcome to use some white paint and clean it up. You can see using a detail brush, there's a lot more brush strokes. I'm trying to smooth them out. And that's why I avoid using a little brush as much as possible. All right, I'm going to take a minute to really thin out my black paint. It's already thin, but I want it even thinner because when I go to do my lines, thin paint is going to be your very best friend. And there's not a ton of outlining on Jack. We just have to go around his head and neck. But that circle head is going to be tricky. Let me remind you, though, Jack's not a perfect circle, okay? He is a skeleton, so if you kind of have some little rumply lines or something, which I will most likely have as well. We're just gonna own it. All right, got some nice thin paint here. And we're gonna do this in sections. We're not gonna feel like we have to go all the way around in one brush stroke. We're just gonna kind of do maybe two, three inches at a time. And hopefully we get a decent brush stroke before we have to reload. But we're just gonna go around until we feel like, okay, I can't go any further. Then we'll reload. 
and continue around the head till our brush stroke starts to break again. And we'll reload again. If your paint is thinned out, you're going to be able to get a much longer stroke before your brush stroke runs out of paint. And that's helpful because the least amount of times you have to pick up your brush, the better. I'm just going to clean that up because it's bugging me. See, even, even I can't help but be picky about my lines. All the way down to the chin. Oh, got a little smear right there. I'm going to fix real quick before it dries too much. It always happens to me because I rest my palm. This is typically when I would move my canvas around so that I can rest my palm when I'm doing lines so I don't smear. But I did. But you can see if that happens to you, you just kind of go through. Thankfully, we still have some of those colors left. And we can fix it a little bit here. Maybe even give our lines up top a minute to dry. I'm using a smaller flat to do this. Not my favorite, but it was just handy. Okay. The fun thing about any mistakes on Jack is they're usually easy to fix because it's white or black. I'm going to make sure I don't have paint on my palm again, which I probably will smear again. And we're going to continue around this head. And that's why I said in the beginning we didn't have to have those perfectly clean edges against Jack and the moon because we're going to come through, right? And we're just going to clean them right up this way. Go down the neck. Kind of has that curved in. Oh my goodness. We are just right there, almost finished. Let's add some fun details in the face. First, we're gonna go ahead and fill in these little nostril shapes. Fill those in. Kind of tricky to get those points at the top, but We'll do our best. Okay. He's got some funky eyebrows. I love painting eyebrows because they really bring out a facial expression. So have fun with these. They're not traced on your canvas, so you can do them exactly like mine or different. That's kind of the fun part about it. But I'm just going to lightly press and then press harder as I come down and then pull away. So I have that thin stroke, thick stroke, and then thinner again. Look at this. He's just going to come together so fast now. Same thing over here. A light stroke, thicken it, and then come down. And now we're going to do that famous big, huge smile that's stitched on there. So let's see if we can... I'm going to be able to do this in one stroke. Let me make sure my paint's nice and loose. Again, you don't have to pressure yourself to do it in one stroke, but oh, I'm going to lose. See how my brush stroke broke right there? That's when you really wish your paint could last just a little longer so that you didn't have to pick up your brush. But All right, we've got that smile on, and now we're going to do our fun little stitches. And with these, I like to be really random not all the same. They're not all going the same way. Some of our are turned in one direction. Some are straight down. 
nothing is exactly the same. And we tend to try to be um, consistent when we paint without even realizing it. We're creating patterns and our brush strokes are staying the same. And then it just doesn't look realistic or unplanned. So try and make it a little bit random. He is awesome. All right, you guys, rinsing out my brush, going to my flat brush, my big one. We're going to do some highlights and then we get to sign our name. So this is just coming along. I want a nice, clean, damp, flat brush. So I'm using my clean water to really get any color out. I want it to be nice and clean. And I'm just going to run my fingers down it like this. Gently squeeze some of the water, but not all of the water. And then put some white on the corner of my brush like this. And we're going to start um, in the eyeballs. And we're going to come around. I forgot a step. I can already see. But we'll get to it. We're going to come around. And put in some white in these eyes. How cool is that? Doesn't that look fun? Light wakes up our painting. I say it all the time because the kids are like, do I have to do highlights? And I say, no, it's your painting. But this will wake up your painting. So I always encourage it. We're going to come down to the collar and we're going to do some highlights on the top of these bat wings because surely that moon is casting light, right? We want to play off of that. And then we'll kind of form that shoulder line like that. Anytime your brush starts drying out, go back to that clean water and add some water. Do this side, just focusing on the tops of those wings, and then those shoulders. Mm -hmm. It's looking like Halloween. Okay, let's go to our bat ears, tops of our ears here, and then we're going to go on the right side of our bat's face and just kind of do a little shape like that bring that to life all right you guys let's cover that little blotch up looks amazing let's make sure we got all our highlights so i forgot um one step with the eyeball so i'm going to go back to my detail brush and this is just a fun addition you can add it or not up to you but i'm going to come down and just create these little little grooves. Start at the top of that eyeball and then just kind of come down. Kind of adds a fun bit of personality to old Jack. If you're feeling like you just want to highlight some more, you can go in with white on those little nostrils, do a little highlight. And that is Jack. Let's sign our name. Make sure you use your detail brush to sign any color on your palette will do. Make your signature your own. It could be your full name, your initials, um, a signature a marking, whatever you want to do. It's your painting. You guys, I would love to see how your pumpkin kings turned out. So be sure to tag us. Send them to us on social media at My Little Paintbrush. If you enjoyed this tutorial and painting with me, do me a favor and give us a thumbs up. And I can't wait to paint with you again. See you guys later.